So uh, secured module stacking is something I've been working on for a few weeks. Uh, <laughs> um, it's, uh, get, it's, it's actually been quite, quite interesting, quite challenging. I've learned a whole lot about uh, implementations of Linux security modules. If you were here this morning, you, you heard some of uh, that, that acquired knowledge. So what are we doing? Well, as of, got to turn the thing on again. I always forget to do that. Okay. So there we go. So as of Linux 5.1, um, we got the first set of the current development effort actually into the kernel. Um, we have infrastructure managed blobs for a, a small set, well actually most of the security blobs. That means that they can be shared by, by more than one LSM. Uh, so as a result of this, uh, the Tomoyo uh, security module is no longer considered a major security module. It can, it can run in, in cooperation with anybody else. Uh, and it does. And this also gives us um, the sharing that we need in order to support the the incoming Landlock and Sara security modules, which are uh, in development. Uh, we've also gotten a good amount of feedback to the effect of other modules that, that people are, are wanting to, uh, to do that they've, they felt that they weren't able to do because, well, I can't put it in because I have to run Fedora and Fedora has to have, have SE Linux and I can't take out SE Linux. But if I can have this other module, in addition to SE Linux, I can work on that and be happy and, and my IT department isn't gonna run me out of the building. So um, we're actually getting a lot, of, a lot of good interest, a lot of good things coming into the pipe. Uh, as of 5.4, the next set of patches that are in development, um, and there's got a nice little asterisk there because there's still a, a, a couple of recalcitrant individuals who uh, need to be uh, convinced that um, this is the, the right approach and that we've addressed actually all the issues. Um, we should be able to have, well, we will be able to have AppArmor and SE Linux or AppArmor and Smack running at the same time. Um, John talked about a little bit about this earlier. Uh, we actually are seeing a large number of, of use cases where people want to do uh, sophisticated uh, container environments where they want to run um, an Ubuntu based system and they want to run Android containers on it. Um, in order to do that, you need to be able to support both security policies. Um, that doesn't get you everything that you want. Uh, it doesn't get you the ability to have different policies in your different containers, but it is, in fact, the next step in that direction. So we still have, um, in order to do that, um, there are a couple of, there are a few things we need to do. We need to uh, make the key sock and sock and super block security blobs uh, infrastructure mannered, managed. That's easy. That's um, you know, just a few lines of code. Since we've done it for the other blobs, we know what we have to do. We can actually uh, do a couple of things when we do that uh, to actually improve performance of all the LSMs that use those blobs. Uh, the way we've uh, actually improved uh, the use of the inode blobs. Um, and that's all of the blobs that we have that we haven't actually converted that are used in more than one module. Um, it's possible that somebody could implement a security module that uses other blobs that we haven't, that we won't have infrastructure managed, but there's nobody using those yet, and so we taking the approach of, if it isn't a problem, we're not gonna fix it. Um, now, one of the things that, that comes up when you decide you're going to have multiple security modules, um, what do you do about the context? Now, the security context is the text string that represents um, your, a security label or a security uh, information, a security blob. Um, so we're adding a couple of interfaces um, to address that issue. We tried a whole bunch of ways of uh, 
playing around with uh, attributes and uh, backward compatibility things that just didn't work and just didn't make people happy. So finally, I actually talked to somebody who does, de does application development, uh, one of the Dbus maintainers, and he said, well, yeah, all these things kind of make sense, but the way I want it is, and as soon as he said that, he had me. Okay. He could have said just about anything at that point, and I would have said, fine, that's the way I'm going to do it. Um, so what he said is, I don't want to have to look in, in proc at our current and switch around things or parse what comes out of there and guess which LSM it is. I want a separate interface that will tell me what the LSM is and what the data is, and, it's got, and I want it to be different because I don't want to get confused when I write my, you know, when I write the Dbus code, which one I'm talking about. So I'm going to be adding uh, proc adder context, which is like proc adder current is today, except that it, it's, it has data in the format of the LSM name, its value, LSM name, a null, its value, a null, the next LSM's value name, a null, et cetera. Um, and that way it can parse it very easily. That inter the interface, uh, it, it will be um, good. And I'll terminate, you'll get a certain number of bytes. It's easy to read out of uh, proc pid adder context. We also want to add SO pure context to go along with SO pure sec. SO pure sec gets you the security context for one socket connection. This will get you the same thing for all socket connections rather than expecting people who are writing new code or code that's going to be cognizant of this to do anything fancy. Now, we also have a case Oh, haha, <laughs> there's a bug on this slide. Pay no attention to that um, man behind the, it does, this shouldn't say proc self adder context, that should say display. Um, there are cases where you have legacy applications that know what LSM they want to, to, to work with that may not be getting that out of current. Now, for example, if you want to run the SMAC test suite, um, it knows that what comes out of current is the SMAC value. Well, if you're running it on a system that has SE Linux and SMAC or AppArmor and SMAC, and AppArmor is, is first in the list, um, SMAC, the, the, the SMAC test suite just gets all confused. Um, it's actually kind of amusing to watch. Um, so we do have to have a mechanism where we can say, environmentally, I'm going to run this program, and when you, I run this program, it, sh it should get the SMAC values, not the AppArmor values. So there's a mechanism, proc self adder display, which if you have cap Mac admin, you can set that and then run the programs that expect things to be the old, an old way, and it, it will work. This is for legacy, legacy support only. We really want people to move, move eventually to um, either a system where they're not ha having multiple modules, or if they are, they're going to use the the new interfaces, because the new interfaces give them the information. And the new interfaces will work even if you only have one uh, module installed. Um, audit data. Uh, you need to have more information in the audit record. If you've got three LSMs, any one of which could, tell, could have denied you access, you really want to have it in the audit record, which one, it, you know, which, what the contexts were for all the LSMs that are involved. So. Of course, we have to honor backward compatibility. So in addition to the existing obj fields and, ob and sub fields, um, we're adding these additional fields, which are obj and then the security module and the value, and sub underscore and then the security module name and then its value. So that if you've got old tools, they'll still, still find subject and object. If you've got new tools, you can find the, the find it the new way, and if you have old tools but you want information that isn't in the old, you know, the old just subs field, you can take the audit record, run it through said, and filter it so that you get, get the right information in the right place. So all the, all the cases except the one where you're worried about amount of disk space, 
you are covered, and yeah, you're going to get more information in your audit trail because you have more information that matters. So, and 5.x, I'm hoping it's 5. I just realized that I'm kind of making a supposition there. Um, 5.x with complete stacking, where we'll have all the modules working together um, like horses in a troika. So what's going to, require, going to be required there? Um, there's some really interesting issues with NFS. Labeled NFS um, has an in the interesting property in that it, although there's a field for telling you what the format of the um, data you're sending is, it's not used. So the Linux implementation just assumes that since there's only one LSM that could possibly be reading this information, um, and uh, you've got a rational administrator who wouldn't put a server that would serve anything else out on the system, out, out there on the network, that it's all going to be fine. They're all, they're just going to agree, so we don't have to worry about it. That's not a good idea. Um, we've had some meetings actually over the past couple of days with the NFS developers about how we're going to go about addressing this. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get real extended attribute support out of it, um, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, NetLabel. NetLabel has got a really interesting um, aspect to the way it's, it was implemented. Uh, whereas most security, mod, uh, security hooks are in the, the main processing line, NetLabel requires that the LSM call in advance and say, here, yeah, when you go do something out here on this socket, here's what I want the, the, the values to be. So when it's actually doing the processing, it's just assuming that the, the data is already there and it's going to go use it. Um, what that means is it's, it's a little, little bit difficult for two LSMs that might want to put labeled packets out on the network to coordinate as to whether they're going to, to agree or not. So uh, the solution to this, uh, of course, um, is for the, the LSMs, for the NetLabel system, to call, out, call back to the LSMs and say, hey, do you guys agree? And if they agree on what the labeling should be on the packet, then you can send it. If they don't agree, um, then it's got to get stopped because no, as a system here, we're not, we're not working out. And it turns out that SC Linux and Smack have actually got quite different ideas as to how the, this should be, be used. So there are actually very few cases where you're actually going to get a packet out. But there are configuration things you can do that will actually make it, make it work. But that's kind of the compromise you had, had to come up with in in terms of you got two LSMs which want to use this, how are we going to make it so that it's safe? Okay, so um, there's the tree. There, there are several branches. Um, and if, <coughs> if um, the disk relabeling has finished, I'll have a demo. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes, it has. Okay. So we are going to do this the hard way. There we go. Now, why isn't? Okay, that's not going to work. I'm not going to. I'm not going to try to force it. Okay, it's not going to work. I'm just not going to force it. Uh, and all the demo was 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 to to cat uh, uh, slash slash. Uh, Sys Kern Security LSM, and you'd see a big long list of LSM names, including AppArmor, SE Linux, and Smack, and a couple of others, uh, one of which you've never heard of. Uh, okay, so that's it for the stacking update. So now.